Thank you for uh, One World Romania for inviting me. I'm really happy to be here and, yeah, as you said, to screen with the real public. And um, I don't want to see so much before the screening, but I wish you a very nice um, uh, bon voyage um, on the ocean. <laughs> I just want to say something before asking you. It was, um, yeah, it, 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 it was over overwhelming for me to watch it on the big screen. I, it was overwhelming on a TV, but here it's even much impressive. And it's very impressive for me in the in a, uh, the way you you constructed it visually and uh, the sound because I noticed that you did all all three of them. You, you did also the sound the image and the, and the direction. Of course, it's obvious that the film um, has many subtleties in, uh, in the way you mix, let's say, uh, in the way you construct this uh, juxtaposition, I don't know how to say it in English. Uh, you understand what I mean? Yes. Uh, between them. And I would like to start from this because I think it's very, it's obvious that it's very particular in a formal way. So I would propose to start from this and then go to the to the topic and to the to the characters because it's I think it's the most overwhelming uh, uh, part or the the most radical decision. Let's say. Can you tell us a little bit how you uh, um, constructed uh, the narration and then uh, uh, these juxtapositions? Because it seems to me that you. In, in, you you constructed a lot in, in sound. It's not the it's a mix between what was there and what you added and what the, the level of the volume and mm -hmm. yeah. It's like a poem in a way. <laughs> it reminded me, no, it's, it reminded me of of your uh, was in the other other poems that I saw. Visual, yeah. Audio visual. Well thank you already. Um, I think um, well, sound was a big problem on boat because yeah. of the wind. Yeah. And I also had some technical problems with the sound. Um, While recording. Recording because it got humid and it didn't work every day. Uh -huh. But then after like in editing processes, I was like, uh, what I do with this? And I think that way I also I took really radical choice in sometimes even take off the sound uh -huh. uh, entirely. And then I did a big work in post-production to, like, to be more radical also. Mm -hmm. But I think it came from technical problems. But finally, I was really happy with this also to go into this direction with, mm -hmm. with the sound. And visually, uh, because you have a lot of times, uh, the, a lot of times the image becomes abstract in a way. Mm -hmm. So this tells me that you you were thinking of it while already while shooting. Tell us a little bit about the way it developed, let's say, while you were there with them. You stood for how long with the characters? I was two months on the boat. Two months, yes. Okay. And I think for me also now seeing again like all these images of the water which get also really abstract, I think it's really my my space. Mm -hmm. On the boat you have to find your space. Two months is a long time being all the time, at least for me together with others, mm -hmm. even sharing the cabin and uh, with somebody else and if you go out of the cabin there's always somebody. So I think this escaping in the water is really my my world. Mm -hmm. And then was the, these young people I wanted to to meet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't know each other before. I didn't like meet them before. So I think there was also this who who are they? Who are like getting like um, confidence from them and letting me also to bring them close. Uh -huh. It was not from the beginning like this, it was like constructed over the uh -huh. two months. Yes. Uh, so it was something, with the style, let's say, of shooting developed while you were there with them. It was not that since the, be since the beginning you, want, you wanted to get to something. It was more like a search process during... I think thing. so, yes. Yeah. What was important for me was that like, I wanted to make the ocean also a, a character. character yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, like more focus really on the young people, and not, not, not 
not putting the adults in the uh -huh. in the first uh, role. Yeah. And it's also this. Uh, I think it's also surprising in the right narrative or out of ordinary in terms of narrative construction, the fact that you 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 know as a spectator very late a little bit about what's going on with that. So it doesn't seem to have been a. But even when you find some details, it's always fragments. It's never, you know, you never find everything about everybody. Some of them, they are not, you don't talk to, to everybody. Uh, I suppose that you did talk to everybody, you know? I mean, this, this is also reflects something that you chose in the editing, you know? The structure, or? Yes, I did talk to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's like, also obvious that some people like Hasna, the girl, yeah. actually, it's, it's funny because before, be, before I went on the boat, she told me, I don't want that you feel me. Mm -hmm. And it happened that we had to share the cabin and she was really angry <laughs> about this. Yeah. And she didn't speak to me for a week, but she started to sit into the frame when I was filming. And I was like telling her that you cannot do that because I would like to make a film. She wanted to block the to see, like to block the door image, not to see. She came in and I was like, you don't want to be filmed, so you sh please don't do this because I cannot use it. And like after two weeks, she said, it's okay. <laughs> so I think you also like, when she was washing, she like really told me her whole story. I could not put it in the film. I didn't want it to put because it wants too much. And also I think like me also when I first heard about them, I was like, yeah, what, what have they done? But actually, it's not a question, it's just what are they today? And mm -hmm. um, we should not care, actually. Just meet them how they are in this moment. And I think that went also there, took off a lot of actions. elements. Yeah, yeah actions. Did, did you make this decision really at the editing, or did you understood while you were on the boat that it would be this kind of, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. did, you, did they teach you this? I mean, did they, you know, in a way? Yeah, I, they teach me a lot actually, but I think um, it was already on the boat also that I didn't want to say like, yeah, I'm it's really strange, like it never was natural to talk about what they did. And um, it's not important because it's past. Mm -hmm. And also, you don't you don't include you don't include a lot or at all. I don't know. Ten, imagine that staying two months on a boat like this, maybe sometimes some tensions appear. Or, I mean, it's like that dramatized in a way. Or you know, you have almost I think no scene where they shout to each other, where I don't know where they cry. So it's 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 it's. Uh, it, it's focused on mundane actions, on uh, everyday actions. I don't know, not on, on spectacular ones. Ordinary or, moments. Yes, yeah, on ordinary moments. Um, and why you, you you said already that you, and it's obvious that you many times you shot them very close. Why was it important for you to to to, to construct it that way? To, to, because uh, I. I can tell you how I perceived it, but well, I'm curious how you intended it, let's say. Uh, I really love to observe people from close. <laughs> and um, yes, it's something about how they move, like people move, or how, also how they do this, like cut the fish, or I'm just really cannot explain it really why, but I, I love to watch it and mm -hmm. to film it. Mm -hmm. okay. And to read something in the gestures and... Mm -hmm. yeah, well for me, for example, but then we open the discussion to the audience, of course. For me it was very... it was a mix between uh, something very... it's like when you are so close uh, most of the times to them and uh, because of the sound and because you mix these moments with with sound, with other, with the sea, and with different kinds of uh, beautiful shots, uh, because it's uh, many times it's spectacular in a way. The image, I mean, it's very uh, particular, let's say. Uh, 
for me it was a mixture between something like a tenderness towards them and the space, which is paradoxical in a way, because when you are so close, it should it should be like an interference in their intimacy, but it was the opposite in a way. It was like the effect was because of the, this mixture, I think, also like what you were saying about the space that you took. It was like a kind of a, it, they were like sphinx, like uh, something unpenetrable in a way. So, but at the same time, uh, it was clear that they were having a lot of emotions and a lot of like every, every human being, you know, a lot of, it was a complex being inside, I don't know how to say. So I don't know, it was a very uh, subtle way of uh, putting contradictory things <laughs> together in a way for me. So please, uh, uh, sorry, please. Um, so you took also the decision from the beginning to go on this boat alone, I mean, without a crew. Yes. It's not any decision. It's a decision, I understand, as your maker, but maybe you can talk a bit. How did you arrive to this uh, decision? Um, just because I think that like they have to go there alone also, mm -hmm. and most of the crew also. But some of them knew because they, like, they sailed the whole year mm -hmm. round. But um, yeah, I think it would be strange to be even two people in front of them. So this was quite quickly sure for me to go along, even though sometimes I would have liked to have somebody for the sound. <laughs> but yes, it was a decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for to be more close and in the same situation as the other ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have a microphone for you, please. Maybe, maybe it would also be interesting if they tell you their opinion or you only accept questions. Because it's the first meeting with an audience, maybe it's interesting also if yeah, they sure. say, yeah. maybe mm -hmm. some of you perceived it in very different ways than us. But of course, please also ask questions. I wanted to ask, so you said you didn't know the kids beforehand, right? Then how did you come in contact with them and the, why did you film this in the first place? Further back, I already did a, a, a travel like this on another boat with also um, people in insertion. <laughs> so that's why I, I really like this travel and that's why I'm interested in this kind of project. And then I heard about this um, association and I wanted to make a film on the boat and I got in touch with them and finally it worked really like two or three years later. It took some time. And actually, I didn't know them before because, um, well, there was some things on the legal thing that we had to, I had, they had to sign, like their, um, what do you say? Agreement? Yes, from their like, legal, um, not, not in this case, not only parents, but like legal um, respondents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, but, um, well, two of them just came like out of uh, minor prison, so actually they don't know maybe a week before they leave, that they will go on the boat. So it was not really possible to meet them before, even though I thought that I will prepare and I will meet them for months before, but actually just, we met on the boat. <laughs> no, on the, on the, on the, on the plane. <laughs> but the idea of this association or, or this action is some, some kind of a rehabilitation after they finish their, their, uh, prison or they are, uh, or it's, it's instead of? Uh, it's both. It's both? Yes. Okay. So some of them are, are here after they, fi they finish their terms and some of them are spending their, uh, I don't know, how to call it like punishments, let's say, mm -hmm. um, in this way. Yeah, sometimes it's just a solution after prison mm -hmm. and sometimes they can choose between two options like going to a home or to spend two months on the boat, so they all have to agree also. But um, yeah, there's different cases. Mm -hmm. But it's always in connection with uh, some troubles. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, 
to say that I really appreciated the fact that you didn't really use music and you let the sound of the sea predominate the soundtrack, if you can call it that. And I wanted to ask you why you chose to end it on uh, this very lively music scene with uh, people who we didn't see before. And I thought it was a very interesting choice and I wanted to know what was the thought process be behind it. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, it's funny because I was hesi uh, hesitating a lot with putting it on it because I think it's a little bit kitsch. But finally I, I like it and I assume it also. And for me it's like a little bit opening another story and also showing other children from elsewhere where other stories are happening. And um, yeah, I didn't want to put music in the film even though it was in the beginning, before the shooting, I thought, yeah, it would be nice. But then I thought it was also nice to have some music in the end and to have something light. And and it happened that we met this incredible community and they played for us and it was really nice. So finally I chose to end it like this. Yes, but not, not more also, actually, about this is another story, I think, also, this next, this ending could be another story. So you made a lot of decisions, it seems to me, also from this answer, that I'm also watching the film, maybe, that you made a lot of uh, decision in structure in the film, not necessarily from a narrative term, but rhythmically, or from, from other perspectives that are, that, are, that, that are, let's say, deal more with the cinematographical parts than to the literary parts to the narrative, you know, to how they fit or how it how it develops mm -hmm. in a, um, I don't know what to say, uh, uh, in this mixture between image and sound and what they construct, how, what kind of harmony in a way, in a way it's music, it's like musical construction, you know, in this way, I mean. Yes, and there's also so many interesting sounds on a yes. on a boat. Just like if you remember this scene of this father and his son on the boat during yes. the end of the film, you can hear this kind of flute. Yes. Actually, it is a uh, um, on the boat. There is like metal tubes behind protecting the the ropes yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they make this sound in the evening if you're not sailing uh -huh. and yeah I collected this kind of sound and I also used it yeah. somewhere else like yeah and many times it seems <laughs> that you uh, you you use the same like superpose or do you say stop yeah no uh, overlap. Overlap. Over. Over. overlap overlap mm -hmm. thank you many different sounds at the same time like you most of the many times I think you have and this is why it's such a, yeah, like, it seems very simple, you know, like a construction and while you are watching it, but the, I think from this mixture, it's something that you cannot put your finger on, I don't know how to say, it's something that is missing, at least for me, I was spectator all the time, and it, in a good way, I mean, mm -hmm. that it's something, and I think it's also, it also comes from a lot from the way you constructed the sound, I think it's a very, uh, yeah, in this way, mm -hmm. with mixing different kinds of peripheric sound, I don't know what to say. You did this, no? It wasn't my impression. <laughs> now don't ruin my... Uh, <laughs> you didn't do this. Yes. You did that. <laughs> You're perplexed? I don't know if it exists in English, <laughs> this word. If some of you maybe want to share two or three impressions, and maybe it would be interesting since it was the first uh, time she... No, it, w it would be interesting or not? Yes. Yes. Maybe some of you, yes, please. So this may be an unpopular opinion, but I would like more background information. Uh, the movie left me with a lot of questions, like open questions, and I would have loved to understand why they were there, what was happening, and what was the purpose of their trip. And I really like the guy uh, running the boat. I think like he's the main character for me. It's not the ocean, not the case, definitely. <laughs> so I really empathize with him. 
and um, I'm, I'm sad to say that I understood the movie after listening to your answers and reading the synopsis, but not from seeing the actual movie. So I, don't know, I, I understand it's your artistic approach and that was how you intended to do the movie, but uh, for me, <laughs> For me, it wasn't uh, it wasn't the best uh, <laughs> the best idea. So just th thank you, nevertheless. <laughs> yeah, thank you uh, for sharing, and um, it's it's also nice to hear this actually, and I can also understand um, to defend myself. <laughs> I think for me also making movies also to discuss after, and you said like you you're left like now with a lot of questions. So I'm like wondering which questions. This art for like just the background of the of the young. It wasn't so much about uh, what they did or how what what they did wrong. Cause it's not about that, like you said. But uh, uh, what was the process for them being there and uh, uh, what was their status right now? So. Were they in school after school? It's because uh, in the synopsis it says a reinsertion program, and uh, is this something run by uh, the French government to rehabilitate uh, young uh, children, youth in trouble, and uh, who runs this program? Like I don't know, uh, logistic questions. <laughs> this was my. <laughs> these were. This. This is what interests me. You want me to answer it? Yes. <laughs> Um, it's actually it's a Swiss Swiss project, Swiss boat, and um, well after it's it's yeah it's difficult. I have like I stayed in contact with the girl, but after I think how to answer this like it's it's more like a gap on the boat. I think a, a time to reflect on themselves. So actually, you know, it's really interesting to know what what they went through, no? It's this what you mean? Like what they went through during this this um, experience. But I think like it's it would be interesting to ask them again like now with some years after, one two years after. And um, yeah some of them like to go to school again after but some of them never will like manage maybe to do something which is judged by our society to be something correct. But um, I think for everybody it's like really good experience and especially for the adults I think also like me included to meet young people I don't usually meet in everyday life teenagers so this was really um, nice for me and for understanding each other in, in this micro society which is on a boat. Yeah, something like that. If somebody else wants to share something, some, or ask something else. Yes, please. have any questions but I wanted to just say that uh, in the beginning of the movie uh, it started uh, in a very dynamic way it was it was it was the wind it was the sound of the wind and everything and uh, on the seat in, in front of me there was there was Vanina who was using uh, the thing and her hair was well, felt like it was it was from that place it was very nice yeah <laughs> okay, so if you don't have other things to say, yes, please. There is another. Yeah. Um, you've already told us about your your relationship with one of the girls. And um, I think it can be quite difficult to put a camera in front of some kids um, and for them not to have any reaction. And I was uh, wondering what was your approach to this, your relation with the other kids and other people on the boat, 
and what was your overall re um, approach to this and their, their reaction to your presence there? Like how I approached them? That's right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. um, actually, I think they are quite used to be filmed and film themselves with their own phones. But um, I think maybe the first two weeks it was quite difficult because I didn't want like them to react like this on my camera, but just going on with what they were doing. So this took some time and I just said to them, I would prefer if you just continue doing what you're doing. And yeah, I think after two weeks it was, it was okay. And they sometimes even forgot that I was there. But sometimes they look, you see few scenes in the film, they, they see me. It's not like I'm hiding and observing them from somewhere they don't see me. They always see me also. But um, I think yeah, they're quite used to, with the mobile phones, to film and to be filmed. So it was not that difficult. Thank you. I would like to, to express my thanks uh, to you for this film. I was impressed. Um, and uh, I would like uh, just to ask you how uh, were uh, your feelings during this trip uh, to uh, two months? How did you feel? <laughs> uh, roller coaster? <laughs> yeah, I think I went to everything. Um, we were also in regions I cannot like reach anybody on phone, so sometimes I felt really um, lost. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of doubts, and <laughs> I wanted to leave the boat. <laughs> but there was also um, really, really good moments. I think yeah, it was like uh, a whole life in two months. Yes. yes. Um, I realized at the beginning uh, the young people were very sad and uh, uh, only sometimes they uh, were laughing yes. smiling yes i think it's it was very hard to um, to work there <laughs> and uh, to make my day smile Mm, well, maybe also I choose this moment, but yes. I'm not only um, seeing it as they are sad, yes. but more like introspective yes. and in, inside, really. Mm -hmm. So not sad, like it's also like some sometimes you say like um, solitude is something sad, but I think it's also something very beautiful. It depends in the amount. <laughs> And yeah, for me it's not, they're not only sad, but I hear it sometimes, what you said also, they never smile, and, but they do. Yeah, they do. <laughs>